which is like um, I feel like PC world I've got things everywhere okay <laughs> we are recording now um, and we are going live on Instagram we are now live brilliant um, so we are here thank you everybody um, for being patient um, I am joined by Dr. Daniel and I am Emily Legs on the Wellbeing Practitioner. Um, we are going to stream this this way, so it's kind of like a bit of a technology experiment. Um, and then we will also post the video up on our uh, stories afterwards as well. Um, so um, before we kind of start, um, just to remind you guys, my name's Emily Legg and I'm a wellbeing practitioner at Young Somerset. Um, and I'm going to hand over to Dr. Daniel, our guest speaker, and uh, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you for bearing with the technological difficulties as well. Um, but could you introduce yourself? Or, uh, Absolutely, people? yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Emily, uh, for inviting me, for the opportunity, for bearing with me, not, not knowing how to join on <laughs> to the uh, Instagram live. Um, but here we are. Thank you very much, uh, everybody. Uh, my, my name is Daniel. I'm a GP in Somerset, and um, but I'm also uh, a life coach, and I work um, specifically with uh, men. But of course, the uh, you know the skills and and uh, and sort of you know the, the the techniques and and so on that it's applicable to to anybody. So my technical role as a life coach is a uh, holistic um, personal recovery uh, coach for men. Because what I what I uh, what I enjoy doing is helping people who or men specifically who might be going through a rough uh, patch to sort of look at life uh, differently and and you know play my role in equipping them with the necessary skills to look at themselves compa compassionately uh, and um, and you know be, being kind to themselves. And um, yeah, but but uh, like I said, um, you know, everything is is uh, very you know all skills are very transferable. Mm -hmm. so anybody can uh, benefit from from whatever we're going to talk uh, about. Absolutely. Really happy to be here. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. I think um, I watched your live uh, session that you did that was kind of more for parents in mind with our, my colleagues Ruth and Ben on Monday, um, which is really great to watch. And it's interesting um, thinking about how obviously you work kind of primarily with men and obviously adults um, and we as a young person service, thinking about the ways that those things can translate. And I think I've been thinking a lot about kind of how we, what we might say to our younger selves. Um, thinking about the situations Absolutely. that we are in now um, and I know personally coming on my own journey with mental health and self-esteem and being in the point that I am now and, and um, I'd love to find out more about your journey of that as well and how and what what we, what would we would say what would those conversations look like if we'd be able to be in a room with our sort of 13 mm. year old selves um, what advice would we give because um, I'm sure many of the viewers that will have that will be watching this um, will have experienced difficulties with their image, body image and self-esteem um, is such a common problem, unfortunately. And I think increasingly with the pressures of social media and celebrity culture, um, the way that we perceive ourselves in comparison, I think kind of gets more and more challenging each year. Um, and so I think it's really important that we uh, ha have a platform where we can support young people that are struggling with their own kind of identity and mm. self-expression. Um, but recognising that we've, we've also been on our own journeys ourselves and um, making those connections. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think um, I think it's really important to, to normalise um you know me mental health issues and of course uh you know concerns over body image are very very common and mm -hmm. so it, it's very important to to sort of like talk about it openly because then it, it yeah it just normalizes it and 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 then people kind of like oh yeah so i'm not the only one and that that alone can have such a tremendous uh you know positive impact mm -hmm. and so my you know, the, the, my story, a little bit about my story and how I um, went from GP to, well, I'm still practicing as a GP, but, uh, you know, how I became a life coach. It's because um, last June, 
on the 4th of June 2019. Uh, unfortunately, my wife um, had a, uh, a seizure. She started fitting next to me on uh, on our bed. And so, um, so that didn't, you know, that really scared me and uh, that led to an admission. Uh, and then she was unfortunately diagnosed with a uh, brain tumour. And so she's well ish she's on on chemotherapy um she's had a, a brain op she's had a uh, radiotherapy and it's been um a really um quite a tough uh year to be honest she was pregnant um at the time wow, okay. with my third child uh so so my my last uh baby boy had to be induced uh the day after we got the diagnosis so everything really uh you know happened really quick and slightly yeah. traumatic as you can imagine so uh you know so so this really really made me kind of uh you know look at life uh from a different lens and kind of uh you know, i was i was in shock as you can imagine and it really uh you know really challenged that status quo that you know we all live life and we all seem to just be you know floating and, and we, we aimlessly we don't really know um and we're just going with the flow and uh, this really made me uh kind of look at you know what is really important for me and uh you know and before i was about you know uh, the job I was about the you know that title that professional uh, title the business card and you know um, maybe having a bigger house uh, you know I was worried about you know where I was going to go on holiday that year and so on and so forth yeah. um, and so through that journey you know the, these the, this past just kind of like 15 months or so I've had plenty of time to look inwards um, and look at my life and and through that I've realized that, uh, you know, for, for a long, long time, for over 30 years of my life, I've had a really good case of uh, not enoughness. So not feeling good enough, um, you know, uh, having to sort of uh, to, to feel that I need to uh, keep over, you know, overachieving to to prove that I'm that I'm worth it, that I, you know, that I'm worth that attention, that love. And, and this is clearly something I learned when I was uh, when I was a child and perhaps not not received uh, you know as much uh, you know as much attention as much uh, validation as I um, as I would have liked um, and I think that this is a very uh, common story I think that you know most people um, can look back in time and into their childhood and and, and um, most people probably can relate to you know to similar things and um so you know nothing special but it then it kind of like makes you realize the impact of what happens you know earlier on in your life mm -hmm. and the coping mechanisms that perhaps uh one develops which we all take into adulthood and yeah. perhaps is not quite you know it doesn't work quite as well you know in in adulthood uh yeah. so so yeah so you know that not good you know not not being good enough i think that you know we all to some degree we all share that because you know society tells you that that you have to keep on improving yourself you have to be you know better than you know the neighbor or, or your colleague or your co-worker and so uh and and you know especially when you're in that kind of uh you know the, the, your teens your 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 late teens when you might be you know experiencing loads of body changes uh you're also uh, really worried about the future and you know and I'm finishing college and what am I going to do next and and most importantly because at that age we all we have all um, experienced this most important what are my you know what are my mates going to do you know what what are they doing and it seems like everything uh, has to you know everything you do has to compare you know is, is being um, compared with what the other you know your your peer sort of group does um and i suppose that body image is no nothing you know no different really so what do you you know what do the people i hang out with look like and so you know that that will have a massive massive influence and that's kind of like where, where i come from and um yeah and trying to you know i've, I've I, i'm on my journey and and this will never be 
this will probably never leave me that you know that not being good enough that's part yeah. of me and so yeah. accepting that is is part of the part of the journey and and i'm sure that you know you know from having different conversations i, I think that people probably uh one point or another realize that acceptance is part of you know is, is part of the journey and, and part of the part of the healing because we we you, you know we, we are who we are and uh you know certain things we can't change yeah. um so so yeah so i think that, that was, uh, what you're saying about the journey is really key isn't it because i think um especially with when we when we're younger and thinking of the younger people that we work with at Young Somerset, it feels sometimes you can just feel like the, the idea of you thinking about yourself differently just seems so impossible and it seems so far away. Um, you can't possibly imagine liking yourself because you can get into such lows, whether it is your body or how you see yourself aesthetically or whether it's how you feel internally. Um, but I think what you're saying about the journey and accepting that you're actually never fully going to feel good enough, you're never fully going to feel this kind of hundred um, percent that's part of it isn't it um, and I think we can often look in kind of coming back to the point of social media and celebrity culture I think we can often look at other people and think that they feel so confident they've got everything their body is perfect um, but everyone has their own internal struggles don't they everyone Absolutely. even if it's you know Kim Kardashian or um, whoever it is it might have all the money and all the plastic surgery but they've still got their own internal kind of demons to fight and their own battles um, to fight um, but it's the journey that's really important isn't it and it's an ongoing one and it's not easy work is it there's not like a I wish there was a quick fix where you could say if you do these five top tips you're going to start loving yourself and life's going to be easier but um, unfortunately we don't have that um, but I think hearing from someone like you who have obviously experienced quite a trauma, traumatic uh, kind of more recent life event with what you were sharing about your, your partner um, and for you how you turned that into a positive experience or a positive life change is really inspirational and something that um, I'm sure will be inspiring to a lot of the young people watching this as well. Um, if you were to be able to kind of go back to yourself, say, mm -hmm. in the playground at school, sort of, or doing your A levels, I know a lot of uh, most of our viewers would be getting their GCSE or A level results at the moment. Um, if you could kind of have a conversation with yourself at that point about how you feel now within yourself, what do you think you might say? Yeah, so I so yeah, thanks for asking me that because it's, it's quite an insightful um, question, and I, I suppose that you know part of me is thinking about the the obvious, the um, you know take it easy, it's going to be fine, uh, you you you're good as as you are, and then uh, the other part of me, perhaps uh, is 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 the more pragmatic part of me, and is thinking, I would actually uh, advise myself, my younger self to go and get a look for somebody uh, who could you know somebody who i could trust somebody who i could talk to somebody who could mentor me someone who could support me you know find that person that that is that you know that that is caring that is um you know that that wants to kind of uh have that conversation with you because they don't feel too uncomfortable and they because uh, that's that was my my experience that nobody really you know mum and dad were you know we're we're, we're, we're you know we're loving uh they just were not very skilled yeah. at it and so uh <laughs> and so um you know and, and they had their own issues i'm sure um and then so there was no sort of like communication about emotions uh emotional intelligence was okay was not okay um and and at that tender age, you just want to fit in because, of course, you know, your, your family unit is, is what provides that safety, that security, that shelter. Yeah. And so you do, you know, you, you, you feel that you must, uh, one must uh, fit in. And so if, if that's not something that, you know, that they, that is talked about in your family unit, then one feels that you mustn't talk about it because otherwise you will kind of, you might be rejected. And of course you, you mustn't 
you, you know, you, you mustn't jeopardize your, your, your safety and your security. And that's, that's uh, the emotional brain. That's what the emotional brain uh, does because we are geared for survival. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not, uh, we're not here. Uh, we're not designed uh, for happiness. And this is uh, something else that maybe, you know, n we need to talk about more and more as a society that, that actually the human race is not, it, you know, we, all brains have not developed to, to be happy, have mm -hmm. developed to survive. And so because of that, we are hardwired to, uh, for psychological suffering in a way, because we are very good at looking for threats and, uh, you know, and, and when, it, you know, in this case, for example, um, looking for threats could be, you know, who, you know, someone who's, uh, who looks, uh, you know, thinner than me or someone who's got, you know, uh, brand clothes, uh, you know, the, the clothes that I wish I had someone yeah. with, uh, the, you know, nicer hair than me. So those are the, the, the threats because then it might, you, that person might feel exposed or yeah. my hair is not quite as nice. And that's the problem with self-esteem. Yeah. That is a comparison game. It's a comparison game. And then it depends on who you compare yourself with. Absolutely. You might, you know, come out losing or, or not. And that comparison is so, like you said, animalistic, isn't it? It's a survival instinct that we've got is Absolutely. to compare and compete. Um, and I think a lot of what um, a lot of brands do and, and celebrity culture and Instagram, it's really, really um, taking advantage of that very kind of innate animal instinct and it's making money off of it, isn't it? It's kind of making money off our insecurities and making us think to be happy, we need to buy this or um, to be happy, we need to be thinner or we need to be curvier or we need to have abs that look a certain way or our hair a certain shape. And it also makes money off changing those trends all the time to a level that we can't keep up with. Um, and it's a minefield, yeah. isn't it? So what, what would you say in terms of um, talk, thinking about young people who are, I think, even more exposed to this than I was and, and yourself, uh, it, more and more as time goes on, the more and more pressure there is. What would you say, being someone who's gone on this journey yourself and is now at a better point of self-acceptance, um, what advice would you have for people who are constantly comparing themselves to others and feeling that not, not good enoughness, as you said earlier? Yeah, so, um, so for me, I mean, I mean, I'm in a stage of my life where I've, um, where, you know, where I've done a bit of a, of a journey. I've got, uh, more, more of my, of that journey to, you know, ahead of me. And like you said, there is no destination. It's more about a direction and, and, and it's for you to, you know, use that, you know, inner compass. Some people might call it intuition or, uh, or wisdom, inner wisdom to, you know, as to where you want to, uh, you know, which path you want to take yourself but is but, but there is no destination it's just that journey and um and for me i'm now in a place where i've uh where i've come to understand that being self-compassionate is is a really really powerful and uh and deeply healing uh mm -hmm. thing so by being self-compassionate what i mean is you know when, when we were 15 um you know you had a uh a, maid who was uh you know got dumped or whatever by the boyfriend and and she was crying she came crying to you and you would uh you know say something soothing to her you would use kind words you would perhaps give her a hug mm -hmm. um you know you would uh you know try and uh distract her and 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 lift her mood or you know you'd be kind to her and so Self-compassion is turning all of those skills, uh, all of those attitudes towards yourself. Yeah. Uh, this is not something we're good at. No. Why? Because yeah. it's very valued in, in society. Being kind is, is, you know, because we are told from the minute, you know, we, 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 we conscious, you know, at the age of two, three or whatever, we, it's kind to share and you have to share with your, you know, with, the little uh, little people around you and your toys and your siblings and so on. And he tells us it's not very explicit that we have to be kind to ourselves as well. And it's yeah, such a powerful thing. I think there's also a lot of um, quite conflicting messaging for even from a really young age, because as you said, we're really encouraged to be kind to other people. And that message, I think, is generally quite clear. Um, 
but there's a lot of attributes or qualities that we're taught not to have you know we're told we're taught to be modest so not to boast um not to show off um not to be bossy not to be demanding these are all things that we kind of we instill in our children from a young age and so we grow up i think often thinking that to tell someone what you want or what you need is being demanding or selfish um by standing up in front of people and declaring that you think you've done something really well is boasting um and it's selfish again and and so actually it takes quite a lot of undoing some of these things as you get Absolutely. older i think actually it's not demanding or selfish for me to tell somebody what i need emotionally or it's not selfish or um self-indulgent to congratulate yourself in front of people either um it, it's not it's important because that's what we do to each other we bring each other up with, with whether it's your friends or your family we encourage each other and we bring each other up but as you said we don't do that to ourselves, do we mm -hmm. um and that applies both for those internal feelings about yourself as much as your body image so it might be you know we're so used to complimenting people on how they look or their clothes that they're wearing on how confident they look today or how well they spoke in a, an assembly or something but we wouldn't kind of dream of saying that to ourselves after finishing something um, and I think kind of collectively it's something that we could all do with um, changing and working towards isn't it Absolutely. And this is something that um, that is very entrenched uh, and is, is the is, is society, is the culture, especially in the in the, you know, in the West. Um, and absolutely. It takes it takes, uh, you know, years of experience to realize that at some point uh, along that journey, that personal journey, um, what we need to do is start to unlearn and learn the the you know, what we've been told but uh, it's just to fit in with society. It's just that, uh, you know, keep your head down. Don't, you know, don't, like you said, don't boast about, you know, your good levels, your, your good grades. Mm -hmm. Don't boast about, uh, you know, your, your beautiful eyes or your pretty lips. Um, and, but that's exactly what you would say to a friend if, who, you know, came up to you uh, looking for some, uh, you know, reassurance about their body image. You would probably scan her quickly and, you know, try and pick, you know what's the most uh beautiful part of her body and compliment her on that mm -hmm. well what's wrong with doing that for you you know with yourself yeah yeah absolutely there's nothing wrong is it, and it's a practice and it's it's the problem is that we've all you know we've all been raised uh you know with 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 you know hearing this every day from more parents from more you know from our extended family from more friends from the telly so you know that the, the the, the the people the the organizations that that know better that know you know that that we should be learning from you know school and so on tell us to be modest tell us not to um you know and and, and so you grow to believe that this is right mm -hmm. and actually no it takes a little bit of unlearning and i think the unlearning can start happening right here right now with this kind of event mm -hmm. where you know where people might hear about you know things being challenged mm -hmm. and yes it's okay it's okay actually yeah it's, it's about normalizing okay so so you know maybe i feel that i that you know that this is something i'd like to talk about you know my my you know how good you know i've got a pretty face mm -hmm. and uh with my friends and i feel that uh you know so you know for, for a long time i felt that 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 wasn't okay and now perhaps i'm starting to you know to realize that that you know that's something i can do mm -hmm. and so yeah if if we can by opening up and talking about it and challenging these um these norms these un unspoken rules mm -hmm. um if we can change a bit the yeah, that mindset mm -hmm. uh that's you know that's a win yeah i agree and I'm, I'm just seeing actually that um someone one of the young people who's commenting on the uh what we're saying now is talking about um their own experience, Amy, thank you for commenting about self-confidence and changing your attitude, even if you don't feel like you've got any, but wearing something that you don't feel confident in and kind of putting it on anyway. And I think that's so true. And the more you surround yourself by other people doing that or um, content on your feed on Instagram where other people are doing things that kind of sit outside what we 
otherwise accept as socially acceptable the more you surround yourself with that the more confidence i think you're going to grow and then that confidence that you've grown in yourself is infectious so if you're wearing something that you you know a year ago you wouldn't have worn because you didn't feel kind of good enough or confident enough to do it but you've managed to convince yourself you're going to do it out there think of all the effect that that will have on other people seeing that and thinking she looks really great and she looks really confident i'm going to wear that thing that i didn't wear and then that kind of changes how we perceive beauty standards doesn't it and what is acceptable Absolutely. um but it's kind of we've got to do it together because it's, it's a big journey but it makes it easier when we're not we're not doing it alone doesn't it it, yeah, and that's such a uh, big truth. And I think uh, there is something really powerful about doing this. And he's um, giving others uh, permission to do the same, giving others uh, permission to wear that bright, colourful, whatever top mm -hmm. that they didn't, because uh, you've done it. So, it, you know, so it must be okay. So somebody's yeah. done it. So, so it's about embodying, it's about modelling, you know, embodying the, 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 the confidence, the change that we want to see out there. We yeah. have to embody it, and it has. It starts with us. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's really, really important. If you want to see change, let's let's do it together, bit yeah. by bit. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a really good, um, really good positive message to end on. I think this chat's gone so quickly. I feel like I could just talk to you for hours about this. Um, but I feel like maybe to summarise before we close for the day, to come away with some of the main tips that you've given us. So one of them you said you'd say to your younger self is that you would seek out someone to talk to, um, which I think is a really good one. Um, and I know you mentioned that... Um, you know, having loving parents is, is you know, if, if we do, that's really great. But it's OK that you want to seek somebody else as well, isn't it? It's OK that actually the people around you might not know exactly what to do or say. And that's OK. And, and I think increasingly there is more help out there. So I think that's a really good message to encourage our um, viewers to do is to if you are really struggling, um, then obviously we've got the service at Young Somerset. But there's a lot of different self-help or counselling services out there. So definitely don't suffer alone. So that's a really good um, one. I think we've also talked about um, surrounding yourself by other kind of more positive influences um, to kind of offset some of the negative ones. So other people that are owning their confidence or owning their sexuality or their body shape or whatever it is, um, choosing to spend more time in those circles and the ones that bring you down, I think is also mm. um, a really, really positive one. Um, have you got any final ones that you want to end us on today? Um, yeah, just just uh, you know, just maybe Google uh, self compassion, uh, mm -hmm. you know, practices, and um, and just you know, trying is is going to be something that's going to feel odd to begin with because we've uh, spent many many years, pr probably all our lives, hearing you know, listening to the to the self critic voice, you know, that the one that's harsh, the one that's not very uh, nice, the ones that the the one that uh, you know that picks on on you know. On, you know on, on, on that thing that, that you feel maybe uh, ashamed about but uh, but we all have a self-compassionate voice inside as well we were born with it all of us because when we were born we had that innate uh, you know wish to be happy and survive and and thrive mm -hmm. so perhaps start paying attention to that voice as well Mm -hmm. And it's, it might might have been silenced because we, we didn't pay attention to it. Uh, so it's like a skill. It's like going to the gym or, yeah. or you know, learning a new language or whatever. It, you know, to begin with, do not feel discouraged because, uh, you know, you will struggle. You will probably hear the, the you know, the self-critic very light, loudly uh, and, and the self-compassionate. It's going to be quite in the, so, uh, you know, pay attention day by day and just think how, you know, what is it that I need to do right now to make myself feel better? Because we do have that power. Yeah. We do, we do, uh, we can make ourselves uh, feel better. Mm -hmm. And there is late, uh, you know, loads of examples that we could, uh, you know, name, but yeah, just Google um, for people out there. If you want to Google self-compassion practices or self-compassion exercises, That'd be a really, really good start. Brilliant. I'm going to go and do that. It's a good way to start my weekend. 
<laughs> to start the weekend with some self-compassion, I think is really great. Um, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on today. And twice this week, we've been really fortunate to have you. Um, I feel really inspired to go and do a bit more um, research around self-compassion and keep this conversation going with young people. So if anyone else listening, we've got some really great comments coming in from people. So thank you for that. Um, I will post this video up on our Instagram so people can watch it at a later date. Um, and yeah, Dr. Daniel, thank you so much. It's been really, really brilliant. And hopefully we'll keep the conversation and keep in touch because um, it's been really great to have you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very, thank you very much. And have a great weekend. Yes. And you. Take care. Take care everyone else. Thank you. Okay, bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye.